Top 10 Bosses We Would Like to See in the Cuphead Show. Welcome to our list of the top 10 bosses we would like to see in the Cuphead show. Before we get into the list, this is strictly my opinion and what I've experienced by playing the game. I'd love to hear what you guys think though, and if you have any changes to the list or want to make a list of your own, feel free to comment that down below. And without further ado, let's get right to number 10, Bebby the Clown. Bebby the Clown was one of those bosses that made me start to really feel frustrated because of how difficult it can be. It really did introduce a lot of different mechanics, and I felt like I had to use the parry mechanic a lot more often just to avoid so many other obstacles that were coming towards my way. I do feel like in this boss it's very beautiful. I really feel like his character as a clown is really zany and it changes quite a lot and there's just so many things to look out for. It gives me that vibe of when you're at a carnival or a circus there's just so many things to look at and much like this boss there was just so many things to look at. This is one of those bosses that I had to replay over and over and over because I would die all the time at the last stage when he's part of the carousel. Maneuvering through the roller coaster was probably one of the hardest things to do in this pause and I would love to see that in the show. It's just so chaotic and like I said before, it's just so much excitement and so many things going on that it just made me feel like I was out of circus. Number 9, Hilda Berg. This boss at the beginning is not that hard. It's pretty straightforward, very simple and very linear to transitioning to different stages of the boss fight. The reason why he's on this list is because I felt like it was really crazy how she became a moon at her final stage and I thought that was really visually amazing to see. The first time I fought this boss, I was shocked and I was so terrified that I didn't know what to do. But I do applaud on its visual transitions. And to top it off, I really enjoyed her theme music. It was very cool, very jazzy. And in the background, when it changes from day to nighttime, I thought that was really nice to see. I didn't expect to see UFOs, that was kind of weird. So it transitioned from like, you know, very um, classic airplane to something a little bit more modern. And she just becomes this moon mech thing. I mean, how cool is that? Number 8, Kella Maria. Kella Maria is probably one of my personal favorites just because of how beautiful she is as a boss. I just think she has really great character design. I love that she has snakes for hair, she controls fish and eels, and then she changes into some Medusa mermaid version? Come on, that's kinda cool! This boss fight is similar to a bullet hell and the obstacles that are thrown at you aren't as difficult to avoid. Even if she petrifies you, it's easy for you to break out and just quickly maneuver before any obstacles hit you. I did find that when she is just a head and it goes through a cavern, that was really difficult because it is a lot narrower and there were some obstacles that can stop you from moving forward or from dodging but other than that, I think it just is extremely visually pleasing and it's one of the fan favorites. Number 7, Jimmy the Great. Jimmy the Great is one of those bosses that really felt like it went on for a little too long. Just when I thought that I finished a section of a fight, it just changes to something else. You can really feel the difficulty ramp up every stage. It gets steadily harder and harder. And once it starts getting harder, you better hope that you didn't make any mistakes because you'll need those life points to get through the last couple stages. And this boss, the pillar stage, was pretty annoying because I always have to look for the one that I can choose so I can move forward while trying to dodge the sharp knives that's going up and down. It really did keep me on my toes. Number 6, Phantom Express. Okay, so this one is probably one of my absolute favorite and the reason why is because I love the color scheme, I love the characters and the bosses, and I think it's just overall really cool. And I'm really into the spooky aesthetic. There's a good amount of difficulty, I love the uh, stage transitions, and the fact that it uses your parry in different ways, such as using your parry to move your cart along the train to fight the boss. I felt that this boss is really different from a lot of the other bosses. The reason why is because most of the other bosses felt like I had a lot of platforming and just maneuvering around, while Phantom Express really focuses on positioning your location. It's really fun too because you have little pumpkins and ghosts that drop little blocks that hit the parry wheels and it moves your position, which can add another element of difficulty. Number 5, Dr. Carl's Robot. In this boss, not only is it difficult, it's very irritating. There's so many obstacles for you to face and you have to decide which one is the one you're gonna prioritize over. Like his laser head, his chest, or his stomach. But I will say in this boss, it is very nice to fight a big robot. It really gives off the Iron Giant reference, which just makes it really entertaining for me to fight. And then later, once you beat the Iron Giant, you fight the actual doctor himself, which kind of reminds you of another reference, right? Dr. Eggman and the Chaos Emerald from Sonic the Hedgehog? I think it's really cool that this one has so many references and I think that's really fun to bring into the show as well. And especially with this boss, it was very satisfying once um, you're able to beat this one. And in this boss, once you maneuver through these projectiles that come out of uh, the Emerald, it just is satisfying and you feel like you got the hang of it. 
Number four, Rumor Honey Bottoms. This is one of those bosses that really tests your skills throughout the game, where you have to maneuver and platform while the screen continually moves upwards, avoid a bunch of obstacles that the Queen Bee is giving you, while simultaneously trying to hit her. Uh, I think one of the hardest things is avoiding those bullets, and it was just really, really frustrating. But aesthetic-wise, I really like the color and the whole vibe of her, and I think it'll be really cool to see in the show as well. Number three, King Dice. With this boss is probably one of my all-time favorites just because I really like the casino theme and I really feel like in this boss there's a lot of chance and randomness that of who you're gonna face as mini bosses before you actually face him yourself. And the worst part is there's a chance that you might have to go back to the beginning so this boss could take a lot longer than you expected. This boss is kind of unique because if you've played through it multiple times it's not all the same. Some runs can be very difficult, some can be very easy and therefore it really leaves it up to luck and chance much like gambling or you know in a casino yourself. The best part is once you get to King Dice it's just simply a test of how good you're at parrying. From the show's trailer we know that he's probably gonna be very involved and probably gonna be a boss but you know it's safe to say that we still want him on the list of bosses we want to see in the show. Number two, Grim Matchstick. Now Grim Matchstick is obviously in the trailer so he's probably gonna be in the show as one of the bosses. I do know that in the time that Cuphead came out, this was one of the bosses that made all my friends rage quit. It is the one that people get stuck on the most and it's also the one that's very popular and very fun to fight because it's one of those bosses that you just cannot make a mistake until you're on the final stage. And the third stage is not too bad because Grim only gives two types of attacks. One where he spits out a fireball where if you hit it, it will project to four different directions and the other is simply a blowtorch. This is the final stage that makes people rage quit because you can make one tiny mistake with shooting one of the fireballs and it will shoot in all four directions and you get hurt and it just goes downhill from there. It is one of the most infuriating stages in this boss fight. Number one, the devil. In this one, it really felt difficult because there are just so many types of attacks that the devil uses and you can never really predict which one he's going to use. You better hope that in the first stage of fighting him that you don't lose any life because then the next stage gets a little harder. A lot of his attacks require really quick reaction times and once you go through the first stage, the next two stages are pretty similar although there's more platforming involved. This one I had to try a lot harder to finish uh, but I do feel like it's not as infuriating as other bosses although I will say this one had the most obstacles I have to face but more than that, I really like his whole transformation and visual changes. It's very spooky, really zany and I just want to see that in the show. I mean, it's obvious that from the trailer, he is involved. You already see him on like the first episode or so, but it just makes me really excited to see him as the final boss in the show. He is the one that I am the most hyped up about. So yeah, that is our 10 top Cuphead bosses that we want to see in the show. Let me know if you have any thoughts about the list or if you would make any changes to the list in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. And like always, I'll see you in the next Geek video. Bye.